Okay, we're going to work on this mixed media portion of the project, and um, I'm not normally a mixed media designer, but when Kelly asked us to do these projects and you incorporate some kind of mixed media, it took me a while to wrap my mind around this, but you know, I finally came up with a few ideas at the last minute, and the first is going to be for the star. We're going to use just, you know, something simple. You can use like a styrofoam plate, which is what I used, or, you know, if you have some of that, those sheets of foam that you can buy at one of the craft stores, that will work. But, you know, styrofoam plate was something I had around the house, so I thought this was a good choice. So what you're going to do is trace the shape of the star on the styrofoam plate and then cut it out with a pair of scissors. And to trace it, I'm just using a stylus. I'm just going to lay that star down, tracing down in the center of the plate. And just go around that with a fine, a fine end of my stylus. Give me a line to cut on. Sometimes easier said than done. Don't want to press too hard because if you do, then the stylus gets bogged down in the styrofoam. You just want to try to keep a even pressure. And I found when cutting this out with a out of a styrofoam plate, because you got this curved edge of the plate, I find it easiest to work in sections. So I kind of line my scissors up with one line, cut it, then move around to another one. And so I'm always cutting, cutting from the point of the star into the, the center angle. And cut that out. The more plate you get cut off, the easier it, it goes. So here we've got our, our star cut out of the styrofoam plate. And I want to give a little bit more dimension and texture to it. So we're going to draw these, these lines that look like, um, like a tin folded star. So I'm again just using my stylus. Maybe this time you want to use the the thicker end and just try to apply a, an even pressure and score that star and that styrofoam will hold that that score. And I'm just using a, a clear quilting ruler to to do this so I can see where I'm lining up. So you're just going to work from each point into the opposite angle that comes in. And don't worry if they don't match quite here in the center. Or you could have drawn a circle, but I'm going to do something else to add a little more texture to this. So I'll set my roller aside. Um, now to paint on the styrofoam, I found that if I put a coat of multi-purpose sealer on it, let that dry, and then apply my paint. That seemed to hold the, the paint really well. So I want you to do that. And while you're doing that layer, the second part of texture that we're going to do is, you know, I kept trying to think of other things that we could add to this piece. And I came up with the idea to use the, the little rubber, I don't know if they're silicone or vinyl or what, the little dots that you use to cushion like cabinet doors or the back of a picture frame. I found these at Home Depot. Um, these are the 3 8 inch size and they're self-adhesive so we don't have to worry about glue for them. And so I want you to, if you, if you use these, you know, again I'm going to put a coat of the multi-purpose sealer on them so that we can paint these. And these are going to be our little berries. 
Now I'm sure you can come up with some other ideas for berries if you, you know, don't have these or can't find them. I think I paid about, uh, I think two packs of these were about five dollars at Home Depot, and that gives me 32 berries. So I want you to um, stop and do a coat of multi-purpose sealer on uh, your star and the vinyl bumpers for the, the berries and then we'll come back. Okay, our, um, I think our sealer is dried now so we need to base coat these. And I thought it would be easier just to base coat all these dots leaving them on the little sticky pad rather than trying to do them individually. So the, the star we're going to base with the burnt sienna. And this will probably take several coats. And don't forget to do your, your edges so that we don't have white edges showing once this is glued down. The same will be for the dots. Um, we're going to base coat them with a red color. So let's start out with a pink. This red so transparent, so we'll mix some white into that. All those are in crimson. And do a first coat on these. After trying these a little bit more, I think a little sponge pouncer would, would do a better job on painting the star. I think we'd get the paint on a little faster. So we're gonna let that one set up and dry, and while we're doing that, we'll we'll try the same thing on the the berries and. last one. Do one more coat on each of these and then we'll come back and start applying them and working on some detail. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of shading on our styrofoam star. Give it a little more dimension and I'm using just a quarter inch angle and we're going to start shading with some of the the raw umber. So I'm loading with um, some of the faux finish medium and some raw umber paint. And we want to shade some of these sections of the star to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm just going to float down along these score lines. And you could use either a quarter inch or a half inch angle to do this. But you can see where that's going to give us a little bit more um, indication that this is a dimensional star. Even though it's really just flat. So we're going to just come around to each of these sections. I'm going to come down to this, this tall one, long from the center out to the top point. And float that color. And then just continue Continue around the star. If I hold it up to the light, there you can. 
sort of see where that's actually looks sort of dimensional. I'm going to add some highlights to that also. And I think I'll dry brush the highlights on. I'm going to use one of um, the round brushes that I like. Any kind of uh, sort of a dome blender or I like these new Royal Sable Tex rounds. This one's a size 16. They've got kind of a soft bullet tip and they make really, they're really nice for dry brushing. So since this is, we want this to sort of look like a coppery star, like a rusty tin or maybe a maybe a, a tarnished copper. If we use some of that raw sienna or burnt sienna with a little bit of the alizarin crimson and put a little bit of white in it, we'll get kind of that burnished copper rusty star highlight color. Let the brush brush some off on a paper towel and then just softly scrub that in sort of opposite where we have our shading. So you can kind of see where I've I'm kind of just putting it against where the shading is. I'd probably like a little bit more of the red color in this star, so I'd like to add a little bit of the alizarin crimson. Sort of as an accent color. So if we come back and can brush some of that over top of our shading. Using the faux finish medium, but I put in just a little bit of water because it's sticking a little bit more to this styrofoam surface. Got a little bit too much pink right down here and Right in this section, I feel like we need a little darker shading, so I'm going to just do a little, a little more wash of the raw umber over those areas. Just, uh, just a little bit to tone them down. I don't want it real heavy. in that groove. And I, I think that looks pretty good. Now I've been de debating on what to do in the center. I'd like a little, um, sort of a little rivet in the center of this star. So one thing we could do, we could either add one of our berries to the center and change the color of it slightly, or we could use a, another piece of the styrofoam to add a rivet. 
And so maybe maybe we'll try the, the styrofoam because I've got an idea for another place to use some of the styrofoam, which would be to create some little rivets on the rim of the basket. So I'm going to stop and get a couple little pieces of styrofoam and we'll make some rivets. Okay, it's real easy to make little these little rivets. All you need is a hole punch and your styrofoam plate. And my hole punch doesn't have a, a little thing to catch on it, so it the little dots will just fall right out. So you can just punch as many of those as you want. They're very easy to do. And I can see where if we just add a little one of these to the center there and maybe do it in a in the honey brown color, make it more of a brassy rivet rather than keeping the same color as a star. It'll add a little accent. And then on the basket, what I'm thinking is we can add a couple of these little rivets here on the the rim of the basket to create just a little more texture. So I'm thinking of placing them about right there. So we need to paint these little things and then we'll glue them on. Put a little bit of sealer on them and let them dry so we can get the paint to it here. So I'm just going to just lightly brush that over and set three of these aside. One thing you could do is get a straight pin and stick a straight pin on the end of, in it. And that would, you could hold it with that instead of trying to use your fingers. But I'm going to set these over here and let them dry while we go on to something else. I'm I think the it. next thing we want to do is um, put our, try putting the berries on. I have a, we're going to do the, the grapevine with another texture and we're going to use a hot glue gun to create the grapevine. So I think it would be easiest to put the berries in place first and then work the hot glue around the berries so that we don't have an uneven surface to try to stick the berries to. So I would suggest at this point you Transfer some lines for your, your grapevine in a little circle where you want your, where the berries are going to be so that we can go in and place all the berries where they're going. So I'm going to take a break and I'm going to do that step now and then we'll be back. Okay, we're back. And one other thing I did want to say is I went ahead and traced in a shape where the the star is going to go so because some of these grapevines will go over the star and you know I wanted to so we need to get that down before we start doing the grapevine and so I'm just gonna sit it in there I've got my berries here I'm gonna see what happens when we peel these off of here them off that adhesive. There's one. I'm going to just start placing these where I want my berries to be. Press, press them down so that the adhesive holds. seem to be sticking pretty good. I'm 
on some of these where the canvas isn't on the frame, I would suggest putting your finger behind that so you can press it hard to that canvas without denting your canvas too much. So let's, uh, I want you to go ahead and apply all your berries except the ones that are going to go over top of the, the star. Uh, we'll wait until we get that star fixed in place before we do that. So let's take a break and go ahead and put the rest of your berries in. And also while you're doing that, you can go ahead and glue your star down. Um, just, I'm going to use this, it's an old bottle of glue I have, so you'll have to use something that you have around your house. But I'm using, this one's called Quick and Tacky. It's by Delta. I don't even know if you can get it anymore. But it is a, one of those really thick glues that should, um, shouldn't take too much to hold something in place. Just want a light layer on the back. I'm trying to think. I know, I know there's some other glues you can get that are the real thick kind that don't take a lot to hold something in place. It's not like one of the real thin glues that slide around. I'm just trying to get enough so that my edges are fairly sealed down, especially the points. I'm going to lay that in place over the outline and press that. that down. And continue on with the berries. Okay, I've got all my berries except the ones that are going to go over the star pressed in place. And so I'm going to set this aside for a little bit and work on these three little rivets that we are going to do for the basket and the star. I found, found these little push pins on my work table. So that, that works pretty good. Like I said, a straight pin would work or a thumbtack, just something to push into that so that you can hold it while you're trying to paint it. So set that one there to dry. The other two I'd like to do in a dark, a dark color. So they look like tacks in the um, the basket, little nails. Let's see which side of this is my so I can try to hold these two at the same time. And so I think we'll paint them the raw umber color, this dark color. should show up on the basket rim. So you want to be sure you get all the edges of these painted so you don't have white showing. set those over to dry.
and I'm going to take a break and go heat the glue gun up and we'll start working on our grapevine. Okay, our hot glue gun is heated up, or my hot glue gun is heated up. What we want to do is run a squiggly strings of hot glue, which will be our grapevines. So I pick a point, you know, and start pushing and just follow your graphite lines. Kind of connecting the berries. Might have to pull strings away later, but grapevines are very squiggly, so you don't have to worry about having a steady hand. You can see why it was better to put the berries down before we did this so that you can kind of work the, the vines around them rather than trying to go back and find flat spots to put your berries in. We're going to set this aside and let it dry. I may try to stick. I've got glue strings all over. Feels like I'm in cobwebs. I think I might try to see if I can attach these two little, these little rivet things, the hot glue, without burning myself. A little pinny dot in the middle there. Put that gold brassy colored one in. And then we're going to do the little nail heads on the basket rim. Okay. So that works pretty good. So I'm going to take a break and let this, this harden and cool off really well. So we'll be back again in a few. Okay, one um, other little thing I've been working on during the break is the buttons. I've um, braided my sister's collection of old buttons to make the flower centers out of, and I've had embroidery floss in a can, little cookie tin for 30 or 40 years, and so I pulled that out and pulled a variety of colors. I you know, I took a red, a purple, a blue, and a an orange color and threaded some lengths through the button holes 
I mean, if, if you don't have any embroidery floss, you could use just, you know, white twine or string. But I just was using the colors of the flowers and just knot it, knot at the thread in front of the button and clip the ends about a quarter of an inch long to give a little decoration to the front of the button. And all the buttons I used were a variety of natural colors, browns and cream colors, tans. So here's, here's the buttons laid out on our flowers and I put the red thread buttons on the blue flowers, orange on purple, blue on red, and purple on the orange. I think we should wait to glue these until you've actually varnished your canvas, so on second thought. We're going to wait to do that, but I just wanted to show you how I did the buttons and then we'll set this aside. My glue is now cooled down and hardened. I'm going to pick all these buttons off of here for now. And our little rivets and things are, are hardened and glued in place. Just need to move all the little, the little st strings that you get from hot glue. So just use um, a small flat or round brush and we're going to paint all these grapevines in. First I'm going to use the dark raw umber. So you just need to kind of carefully go over all of these. I'm not trying to get right down to the canvas. If you see a little bit of the clear glue, I think that's okay. It just looks like a highlight, gives it a little more dimension. So I'll just paint a few of these so you can see, and then we're gonna take a break and finish these up so I'm not wasting all of our two hours having you watch me paint these little grapevines. So I think you can get the idea there. We're just going to paint those grapevines in and the brown and then we'll come back after we've got them all base coated. Okay, I've got the grapevine based in with the dark raw umber, and at this point I think we need to do a little more detail on our grapevine berries, um, our little rivets, and we're getting close to being done. So first thing on the, the grapevine, what I'd like to do is I'd, I'd like some little background, a little bit more background vines in here. So I think I'm going to add a few more that are just flat on the canvas, just painted in. And I want them a little darker, so I'm going to mix some ultramarine blue with the raw umber and just draw in a few more. background um, vines. I think the, the flat painted ones will give just a little bit more dimension to the ones that are raised with the glue. Also gives me a chance to any little messy spots that I did 
where I got maybe paint on the background that I didn't intend to when I was painting the, the grapevines in. You could also go back and just clean up your background with some of the sand base color. Don't want to overdo the stage, but maybe do some little frilly ones here on the end with some curly cues. It will sort of tuck behind our um, tag when we put it in there. Okay. So I'd also then like to highlight some of the the grapevines that we did with the the glue. They're all kind of monochromatic right now. So let's go back in and use some of our lighter colors like the raw sienna and just come along and hit some highlights on these. Especially you can do these ones that are over the the star that will bring them forward a little bit. You can add a little white to that if you need it to be a little bit lighter. But you can see where that just makes a few of them. Gives them again a little more dimension. Now the berries are still looking sort of flat, so I'd like to do a little bit more shading and highlighting on them. Let's um, maybe float a little bit of the raw umber. I brush that on the, the right side of the berries. I'm going to switch to a, a little smaller brush and we're going to add a little bit of a shadow on the rivet at the center of the star. Again, we're going to just use the raw umber and just float along that bottom left side like we did on the berries. And a little bit of the darker color with some some of the ultramarine blue added. Let's float on the bottom edge of these rivets that are on the basket. And let's float some of that around the bottom of that. Around the whole rivet on the, the star. can add a little bit of a shine to that center by floating just a touch of white with a little bit of the raw sienna added. Do that on the opposite edge here at the top right. Do that also on the basket rim nails.
And once the berries are dry, we're going to highlight the the right side of those with um we're going to use the alizarin crimson with a little bit of the burnt sienna mixed into it and then a little bit of white we want kind of a peachy pink color and we're going to I'm going to do a washy float on the right side of those berries. And we're going to go back and add some little tiny dots of white. Uh, to cause little shine marks. And I just use the tip of my really fine cannot with liner brush. You can use a small stylus or something if you prefer. And we'll do a little bit same dot on the rivets. And then do on these we're going to do a little crescent line on the bottom left. Okay, I think we're heading into the home stretch. Um, I think I'd like a little bit more color in this background here next to the vines on the, the left side. It's got a little bit washed out looking when after all the everything got put in. Sometimes you think things are dark enough, but when you see the contrast of what your painting looks like. So I'm brushing, a, this time I'm going to brush a little bit of the faux finish medium down here using this big soft round brush. And I think we'll put in a little bit of the, the raw sienna. Add some more, more of that color down in here. Just to darken that edge a little. Soften that as we come up into that more orange color. I think that a little bit more color anchors that. And again, remember to go around your sides if you're not going to, to frame this. I'm tucking some of this down in here in these gaps in the grapevine, just dabbing it in. Okay. We need to do our, our tag that's going to go here on the right side. And in your pattern, I gave you one that you can print out on cardstock, which is what I've done. And this will save you from doing some of the painting. If you prefer to paint it, if you don't have a colored copier or colored printer, um, you can just cut your tag out. But I printed it here on the cardstock and I'm just gonna clip real close to the, the little outline I did. And this tag is going to, to sit in right here but the first thing, first we need to do a little bit to it. Um, this is just a white cardstock, and I want to make it look a little bit older, so we're going to 
shade the edges with some of the raw sienna to give it a little bit more of a tea stained look. And brush, just brushing, like side loading down this bottom edge. Along the front edge. I'm going to leave um, the top edge just more white to create sort of a highlight. Now the little circles in the center we can paint them up to look like flowers, so I'm so good at losing my paintbrushes. Oh, there's a round. So let's fill in the, the centers of the circles with I'm gonna try some faux finish medium and a little bit of the raw sienna. That'll be our center. And then we're just going to do some very simple little flower petals. We'll do the one on the left in the red colors and the one on the right in blue. So we're using the permanent alizarin crimson. Let's see if you want. Just making this like a little daisy type flower. Simple little strokes around the, the center. And switch that out and do the other one in blue. If you prefer to paint the tag, uh, the, the letters are just your green color that we use for the leaves. And just use a, a small round and paint them in. So we'll set that aside to dry. Um, Go back to the the painted sample, and as I sit here and look at it, I would really like a little bit darker shadows here along the top of the basket. It's still looking a little bit light to me, so let's uh, dry brush a little bit more of the the raw umber up here from the top down. You can also you could also float it along the top if you want. I just want some stronger shadows in there. Like I said, once you once you do all your painting, it's it's good to step back and look at everything and decide whether everything is dark enough or light enough when you see the whole overall picture. I still think this was just a little too light. Then again, you may prefer a lighter basket, which is okay too. Just a little darker streaks through the, the basket rim.
Now that we've done that, I'd like to add a little bit of highlight to the basket. And I'm going to use this round brush and a little bit of white. I'm going to work that out. I don't want too much paint on there. And then just add just a few highlight strokes. the bottom of that basket rim. Final thing, let me see, let's put our tag in here, but I've got the tag kind of curved a little bit. I'm not going to put it in right now, but after everything's varnished, I would suggest gluing the tip of it here to the basket rim. Let this outer edge curl up to give shadow and dimension. And you can actually tie a tie a little bow from a piece of string, like a, a cream colored string if you have any, or some jute twine or something, and glue here in place like the the little tag is tied to the basket. And then the final thing before varnishing is I would like to spatter the, the design and I'm thinking I'd like a little bit more of a highlight on that star and I'm going to do that with just a liner brush and a little bit of the white paint and I'm just going to come along and, and just hit the, the edges another string Blue strings will be there forever. So I'm just doing a real fine line of white here on the right. You do a Sometimes these lines will look kind of intense when you first put them down and they're wet, but once they dry, they they settle into the background color and won't look so um, prominent, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So let's come along. I guess basically I am outlining the star with a very fine hairline of white. Okay. We're here. And we're done. Okay. That gives it up just a little more dimension. this point it's just fine-tuning things that you like or don't like. I, I feel like I've got a little too much white here on the band. 
So I'm going to tone that down with a little bit of the the raw umber, or I'm sorry, not raw umber, but the raw sienna. You can't see that quite so much in the because of the wetness, it looks real white on the camera still, but that's just taking a little bit of the chalkiness away. So if you'd like any other colors in the background, you know, you might want to put a little bit of green over here on the, the right side. We could smudge in a little green over here. that out. Maybe put a, a little bit of that green up in this corner now. And I've got the faux finish medium on my brush, so I've kind of keep that paint a little wet so I can work it in and I'm just scribbling it and scrubbing it into that background as I come in just it softens and blends in there I think I like that better and I'm sort of feeling like we need a little bit more green in a couple spots here and in, in between the flowers so I'm just going to soften a little bit in here and there. Like I said, sometimes when you're doing it on a blank canvas, it looks like you've got plenty of color. But then when you put all the elements in, you have to go back and adjust things a little bit. This is just a matter of personal preference. If you like the lighter background, that's that's okay. leaves a little bit. Okay, we're going to spatter it all with some raw sienna and maybe a little bit of um, the raw umber before we varnish and add the buttons. When I'm spattering, I usually like to use just a, a large brush with some water in it. Pick up some of the paint and mush it together on the palette. The wetter it is, the bigger the spatters, the drier it is, the smaller the spatters. And then take either another brush or you know, I'm gonna use these scissors and tap. And you can See, I'm getting little speckles. We want to speckle that tag too, so that's why I've left it in there. the raw sienna will add a little bit of the, the dark raw umber color. I want these to be a little smaller so I'm going to dab a little of the water out of that. 
These are very fine little fly specks. are done. One more little thing I'd like to do on the tag. I'm going to flip the tag off of here and set this aside so I don't smear those spatters before they dry. I'd like to shade those flower centers just a, a little bit with some of the, I think we'll use the orange, try that. I'm just going to Put a little bit of that color around the left side, and that pops them out a little bit more, makes them a little brighter. So at this point, what you have left to do is, and I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to let the canvas dry. I'm going to varnish it, and then we'll come back and glue the buttons on, and then we'll be finished. I'm back after doing some final steps on the the bath the button bloom basket. I added I think two coats of a matte varnish. It's got a slight gloss to it, but it's considered a matte. I um, glued hot glued all the buttons on so you can see them in place. Still got some those darn hot glue strings that need to be picked off. I added a couple coats of the varnish to the front and back of the the tag and hot glued that in place and made a, a little bow out of some ivory twine and hot glued that. So I think that was the only thing left we had to do. So you know, I wanted to show you the final project, and I hope you enjoyed the class, and come take some more online classes with me at my website, decorativepaintingstore.com. I've got a few classes there now and have plans to do more in the future. Thanks for taking this one.